a team of researchers published some new findings in the journal Molecular Psychiatry, and they've basically identified six new genetic variants having to do with human response to coffee. And believe it or not, that actually brings the total number to eight known genetic variations related to coffee intake. Which is really interesting. We're changing our code because of the coffee we drink. So, what does this mean? Well, it basically explains why some people need multiple cups of coffee to get that buzzy, productive feeling, while other people really don't need any coffee to get that feeling, or just a few sips of coffee to get that feeling. So basically what we've discovered is that some people have a genetic predisposition to coffee addiction. Now, understand, those are my words, okay? The article lays it out in different language, but that's definitely what I got out of it, that some people have this genetic predisposition to coffee addiction. So the study involved 120,000 coffee drinkers and an analysis of 2.5 million genetic variations. So this is as thorough a study as you can possibly get. But why are we even talking about this? Why are we bringing it up? Because here's the takeaway. To me, this has more implications about the possibility that this is the reality with other drugs. You know how you always heard people say, oh, yeah, um, alcoholism is genetic or, or, you know, something to that effect with addiction. That may be true. That may be true. Maybe at the time when people were saying that in the past, they didn't have the evidence to support it, but we're kind of working towards that, you know. And to be clear, that has not been proven, okay, unless there's some research that I didn't stumble across and I didn't see before doing this segment. But it wouldn't be surprising if that's the case, okay. And look, this leads to an even bigger conversation of... If that's the reality, which it may be that all these different substances that humans have taken throughout time, whether it's marijuana, cocaine, opium, or caffeine, or alcohol, whatever, okay? If that's the reality that we all have such drastically different tolerances and effects when we're on those given substances, how can you possibly have broad sweeping drug laws that say, we are banning this substance, we are banning that substance, we are regulating that substance? That doesn't make any sense. Because if you give a Xanax to my sister, maybe she passes out and she can't take it and she's incapable of operating machinery or working on it. But maybe if you give it to my cousin, maybe my cousin is super productive on it and it just relaxes him enough to get in the zone and focus to, to do a task at hand. Maybe it's the same thing with uppers. Maybe, we've proven with caffeine here. Maybe it's the same thing with alcohol. Some people drink alcohol, they get super drunk and it gives them that sloppy feeling. Other people drink it and it makes them feel relatively normal or just slightly happy. I mean, I think the bottom line is, we're not all a blank substance slate, where you insert or, or inject a given substance and X is the reaction. X is the reaction, but to massive varying degrees, and with some people it's more powerful, with other people it's not as powerful, and to have broad sweeping drug laws that treat all people the same when the substances react differently with the body, that doesn't make any sense. So to me, the, what we should do, and this just links into something we've been talking about for a while, you have to at least decriminalize drugs, more likely or preferably legalize drugs, and make it so that it's more of a freedom issue and a personal responsibility issue, where you have the right to put in your body whatever you want to put in your body as long as you're not hurting anybody else, and it shouldn't be the government locking you up in a cage if they disagree with you.